This time on Low Boost, I'm gonna do an in-depth breakdown on everything I did on my BMW E36 Turbo LS swap. <laughs> wanted to do with showcasing this build was to show someone that's not a mechanic as long as you have some tools and some know-how and some space in your garage you can do this stuff too I will share my experiences as a as a novice guy working on cars the stuff that I run into and hopefully that helps you guys so that's the main reason why I wanted to showcase this all right so what I'm sitting in front of now is a 1994 BMW 325 IS, or at least it started out as a 325 IS, now it's the 360 LS. Um, I picked it up, the car was originally from Virginia, I picked the car up for like 2300 bucks and I drove it around for the summer on the stock engine and transmission. <laughs> space to start tearing it down yet so I wanted to enjoy the car a little bit I've always wanted to LS swap an E36 I've always had that inspiration um, in 2008 I saw new age hot rods LS swap, LS6 swap and E36 M3 and I fell in love then so that was always my dream and goal to do something very similar to that so about halfway through the process where I started buying parts of this car, I stumbled across sloppy mechanics and totally had a little bit of a change of heart. Originally, I didn't want to do a build like that, but then after I watched his stuff, I really wanted to try to tailor something to that or just kind of take it one step further and uh, kind of come somewhere in between super, super budget, like a don't BS me build or a super high end build. I didn't want to build a car that was going to be super expensive, put a ton of money into the thing for it to be just as fast as something like Matt Happel's Don't BS Me build or the 8s for 8. I wanted it to be somewhere in between, but more on the lower end side. So I found a couple of things I spent a little extra money on and I'll go over with you guys what I did. But for the most part, I still could have did this thing just as a sloppy, as a sloppy build would be, just like a Don't BS Me style one. One of the main reasons that I had to do what I did was I had space. As you see here, um, go, it fits in. If I did the truck manifold on the top, it wouldn't have fit. So I actually ended up having to get all Camaro accessories and, a, and an LS6 intake manifold to be able to have the hood shut. Also for space constraints, I had problem fitting a big, you know, sloppy style turbo underneath the hood and I barely had enough to measure even a 78, 75. So I actually went with a Borg Warner SXE 372. Here's a little breakdown of the engine itself. It is an LQ4 6 liter out of a 2003 GMC 2500. So it is a Gen 3. I swapped out the truck accessories for F body Camaro accessories to be able to have a better clearance here and to be able to fit an LS6 intake so I can have the Corvette uh, coil pack covers to make it look nice and pretty. I did not use the truck manifolds or any other custom ones. I used Camaro manifolds and flipped around. I had some problems clearing the um, clearing the brake booster. I had to cut out the shroud a little bit and I have some heat wrap there, which works pretty good, but the Camaro one was able to fit better. This one is flipped up, that one is flipped down. As far as power steering, I was able to keep that. I also was able to relocate my heater control valve over there and the car still has heat as well. Uh, initially, I had HP tuners, was going to use stock PCM, but I uh, was later convinced to go with Holly Terminator X, which is what the car is running on now. Internals in the motor. It is a stock, untouched bottom end, just as it would come right out of that pickup truck. I didn't even gap the rings because it has 150,000 miles on it, so we're going to roll with that and hopefully it doesn't pop. The cam is a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 1 Turbo Cam and I got dual cone valve springs for the top. Now, I easily could have gotten away with the Sloppy Stage 2 and Pack 1218s, but I didn't even know who Sloppy Mechanics was when I bought those things. 
Either way, it still wasn't super expensive and it's gonna do the job just fine. Also, I forgot to add, I did do ARP head bolts, not studs. I don't plan on going to a thousand horsepower on this thing to the tire. ARP head bolts are more than enough for it. As far as the turbo goes, it is tucked down there. It is a Borg Warner SXE 372. It's a smaller frame 300 style turbo and it fits down right underneath the headlight just fine like that. As far as exhaust piping, going from the manifolds to the turbo, I have all two and a half inch, just mild steel and most of it's heat wrap, nothing too special or crazy there. Going down into the turbo, it's a T4 flange, 1.00 AR. Obviously you can see this here and then this side, it actually comes down underneath. This is my crossover and then comes all in together into this collector and then it goes straight down my wastegate is over here and then the turbo is down there. The downpipe actually is underneath this. That's the downpipe there. It comes across over and down by where the starter is, nice and heat wrapped. I have a flex pipe there and then it goes out the back. It's three and a half inches all the way. As far as the cold side goes, it comes out of the turbo, going into a cheap eBay intercooler, three inch inlet, three inch outlet, going up there, coming through here and then got some nice bends here and into there. Also got an eBay blow off valve as well. As far as the wastegate, I spent some extra money on the wastegate and it works really, really well. I got a Tile V60D wastegate. I just felt like the one thing I wanted to make sure I knew I could control is boost. And the V60D wastegate does more than enough on this. Um, you know, I probably went overkill on it, but I, it works and it works really well. If you like what you see so far, consider subscribing to the channel. I upload a video every week about cars, not just on my E36 Turbo LS swap that I have over 20 videos of the full build experience with, but I have a C5 Corvette that I track. I also have an M235, tons of videos on that. And I have a 1953 Ford F100 pickup truck that I'm building with my dad. So if you like any of that stuff, hit that subscribe button. The injectors, I ended up going with ID1050 injectors. I know a lot of guys are going with the snake eaters now or the DECA 80s and whatnot and everything else, but I went with the ID1050s. They just have more data and um, they have great customer service. I had to send them out once to have them flow tested and matched and they did it, it was pretty cool. Um, and they send it right back really quickly. So I like the customer service on that. Steering pump is just your regular F-Body Camaro power steering pump. The high pressure line I did get from Chase Bays and it works great and it's designed to go right into the steering rack of the BMW E36. The return I made my own. The oil feed I did out of AN lines you can see right here and it goes down into there. Because the turbo sits so low, we had to get creative in how we had the oil return back to the engine. So I had to make a scavenge tank that sits directly underneath the turbo. So the oil will collect in there and then gets pumped out by my oil scavenge pump here. And then that feeds back through and then goes back into the engine that way. This is the New Age Hot Rods E36 LS swap radiator. This is a direct fit. It is designed to have an LS swap in an E36. It definitely helps keep the car cool. I do need to do some ducting to make sure that the air goes to the radiator, but it works pretty well. The drive shaft is also a New Age Hot Rods E36 LS swap drive shaft. Rounding out the LS swap kit is the New Age Hot Rods transmission mount and the New Age Hot Rods engine mount that made this swap extremely easy. My shifter is also an MGW shifter out of an F body Camaro. I have an Aeromotive boost reference fuel pressure regulator, but the boost reference isn't hooked up. It turns out that we really didn't need it. And I have a uh, Holly fuel pressure gauge that goes into my Holly ECU. Part the inside of the car, I've kept completely stock. Um, I kind of like that look. It's, it is a BMW and I love BMWs. I have a T56 six-speed transmission that is out of a 2004 Pontiac GTO. I got the Rally Road um, uh, column gauge mount and I have the uh, AEM air fuel ratio gauge, but I use the Holly one now too predominantly. And then I have a AEM True Boost boost controller, which also functions as a gauge. 
and it bolts it on there pretty nice. I'm probably gonna get a different wheel, but as of right now, the airbag still works and it is still a street car, so no cage or Hans device. And it's probably better that way for now, even though I don't like that wheel, it's ugly. Regular sports seats, they're pretty heavy. I'm probably gonna upgrade them at some point. Um, it'll just look nicer inside. The Vaders are great, but people want ridiculous money for them. As far as a clutch goes, I got a McLeod RST twin disc clutch. It's supposed to be rated for around 800 horsepower. We're really gonna test and see how much that thing can handle. I could have did this a lot cheaper and a lot faster if I didn't get the T56 six speed automatic or like a 4L80E would make this car a lot faster than it is, but it's a street car and I love driving a stick and I really enjoy driving the car the way it is. Isn't that all that matters? I did go with an M3 front bumper. <laughs> it's not painted yet. I'm still working on getting all the proper tools and stuff to be able to paint it. And I want to do a rear uh, spoiler too with the same batch of paint, but I went with that front bumper. I'm trying to keep it as subtle as possible. It's kind of hard to hide the intercooler, but I wanted to keep it to look like just basically, a, you know, your basic E36 M3. I got original uh, E36 M3 contours and had them redone so they're brand new looking. I didn't do the side skirts, but I just painted that black so it actually looks pretty decent. On the back I have m and Race Masters, 245, 45, 17, and uh, even on 10 pounds it hooks at 10 miles an hour. I'm not gonna really try to go crazy with launching it just yet because it is on the stock rear end. You can see here I changed the back of it from 325 IS to 360 LS. I've always wanted to do something like that. There is no M badges on this car outside of what you see on the wheels for an M3. I do not believe that a non M car, I don't care what motor it is, you can even put an M engine in the car. If it wasn't an M from the factory, please do not put an M badge on it, no matter what. I don't care. Yes, I'm talking to you. As for right now, I have the stock 188 millimeter diff in the back with the stock axles. Um, not gonna try to launch the car just yet. I do have a 210 millimeter uh, diff out of like an old M5 that should hold a thousand horsepower. But for right now, this is gonna do, I wanna enjoy the car for the summer. So um, that's the diff that I have in it. As it sits right here right now, it is tuned conservatively on 93, uh, about 10 PSI and 11 degrees of timing. So, you know, a lot of people would say that's pretty conservative, but I do wanna turn it up. Next for me is gonna be getting a flex fuel sensor and hopefully ethanol gets better in my area and we can actually turn the boost up, add some timing and uh, with some E85 in there and definitely make some more sauce. I feel like it's maybe around 500 horsepower to the tire. Um, definitely could get another degree of timing or some more boost out of it. Might do that um, and have my buddy Justin from Savage Speed Garage kind of play with it a little bit soon and see what's going on. Catch can I did a review video on for my C5 Corvette over there. It is just your regular eBay, Amazon catch can. I'll put a link for it in the description below. It was $29 and it really does the job. The only thing different that I did on this one, this one has a breather and it has a dipstick, um, but I also have a one PSI check valve in there. So when actually boost is blowing in the car, it doesn't push it in through and uh, you know blow out all my oil, oil seals inside. The rest of the top end, I have LS9 head gaskets, LS7 lifters, and the LS7 push rods, I think. So I have everything match up all nice. My fuel lines initially, I went with eBay dash eight AN fuel lines all the way through. Um, they were not PTFE, and I think I had some fuel problems, so I ended up swapping them out to Vibrant Performance uh, PTFE fuel lines running all the way from the pump to the regulator and back. Um, I originally had a Walbro 450 fuel pump and then was having some issues with it. I had it too low in the tank, I think, and it wasn't sucking up right. So while I was there, I might as well just change it. And now I have a Walbro 525. So far, I haven't had any issues on the stock wiring. These, this is a relatively newer car. It's not necessarily as old as like one of the 80s Fairmonts, but I probably will have to upgrade the fuel wiring at some point once we have a lot of more demand out of that fuel pump. So that's the full build breakdown of the car. Um, let me know if I left anything out. Let me know if there's anything else that you guys think that I should have added to it. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys have any opinions or what you guys think I should have did, either if I went too sloppy or not sloppy enough on some things. 
So let me know in the comments. Also, I'm still continuing to work on the car, so I'm still gonna be doing up more stuff on the E36. Right now I'm working on a cheap brake upgrade for the E36, and I should have this video up in the next few weeks. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. All right, so can't think of anything else that I did to the E36 that I haven't already talked about, but if I do, I'll make sure to put them in the comments below or in the description. So thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.